Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 221. Welcome to EntrepreneurOnFire.com, where remarkable entrepreneurs share their inspiring story. Let their journey illuminate your path to success. And now, your host, John Dumas. hi Fire Nation. We're going to give a quick thanks to our sponsors, Squarespace and GoToMeeting. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that allows you to use drag-and-drop technology to create a beautifully designed website. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code FIRE. GoToMeeting with HD Faces is the powerfully simple way to meet and collaborate with your team online. Try it free for 30 days. Visit gotomeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use the promo code FIRE. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Beth Millman. Beth, are you prepared to ignite? Yes, John, like a lobster going into a pot of boiling water. Oh my God, you know I'm from Maine, don't you? Yes, and I had to do an homage to your Maine roots. <laughs> You're the best. Beth is the founder and CFO, Chief Fun Officer at Popzazz. Popzazz finds the best party board games for adults and themes these board games with high-quality products that encourage conversation, fun, and connection. I've given Fire Nation a little overview, Beth, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you. And then tell us about your business. Great. Thank you so much, John, for having me today. Well, in a nutshell, I am based in Los Angeles. I have spent almost 20 years in the entertainment industry and While at my last position, I was a director of business affairs at Fox Networks, I was sitting in my office one night, John, and it hit me at about 10 o'clock at night that I have no fun in my life. I work all day, I stay late, I go home, if I'm lucky, I see my dog that I pick up from doggy daycare, spend a little time with him, I go to sleep, and I get up and I do it all over again. And it hit me that if I'm having no fun at my office, The people around me who were also with me at 10 o'clock at night were having no fun. (laughs) And if we're having no fun, there's got to be millions more out there like us having no fun. So that realization led to this inspiration. There's got to be a way to bring people more fun and connection as part of their daily life. And basically, in a nutshell, Pop Saz was created right then. My goal was to take the concept of fun put it in a box and send it out to people. And you might say, well, how do you put fun in a box? Well, I started thinking, well, what's fun? What can I ship? What what can I send to people that maybe they don't have time to get? And I thought, well, games are fun. Board games are fun. And you may say board games, aren't they sort of dead? Well, I discovered during research that board games were having a resurgence. We're, We're still in a tough economy and people don't have lots of money to spend. And they were going out and buying board games. And I thought, What if I take really fun party board games for adults and create a theme around these board games? So, for example, if you're going to take a board game that's called Sushi Roll, what if I take the Sushi Roll board game and theme it and come up with, say, a sake set that will go with the Sushi Roll, some chopsticks, a snack food? I'll put it in a box, I'll beautifully wrap it, and I'll send it off to my my customers so that they can have a little bit of fun in the little time they get off from their work. And that's sort of how we came to the whole Pop Saz concept. Genius. Well, Beth, thank you for that little rundown. And we're going to delve so much further into this and the exciting world that you've created later on in the interview. And I do have to say, we've known each other since late 2012. That's when we first were put in touch. And we've talked numerous times since then. And it does just truly amaze me that you at one point in your life just weren't having fun because you were like the most fun person I know. Thank you, John. Well, it takes one to know one, and I can say the same exact thing about you. Um, I think your journey and my journey are very similar. I think we both followed a path that we both thought would lead us to success, and that would lead us to fun. And I think when you're not pursuing your passion and you're not doing work that you're truly passionate about, you're not having fun. And for me, I can at least say that I had a company I was crazy about. I loved the entertainment industry. I loved being part of it. 
but I wasn't doing work I was passionate about and I wasn't having fun. And I had a job some years ago that I loved and that I had fun at every day. And that was when I was working for the Screen Actors Guild as a field rep. And I really wanted to get back to a place where, where I could feel that sense of excitement every day when I get up. And I imagine, John, when you wake up now and you know you have shows to tape and people to talk to, that it's fun to you. It isn't work. I love Mondays now because every Monday I've set up purposefully to do eight to 10 interviews with entrepreneurs like yourself, Beth, that are just inspiring, that have amazing journeys. And it's a great day. It's a long day. And I'm definitely drained afterwards because I'm putting all of my heart and soul into these interviews. And there's eight of them, sometimes 10. But I mean, come on, you can't complain when I get to talk to people like yourself all day long. And, and, Thank you. And I can't complain that I get to talk to you. It, it, it's, it's fun and, and, it's, and it's entertaining. So. Well, Beth, again, we're going to just dive a lot more into Pop Zazz pretty quickly here. But before we do, we love starting Entrepreneur on Fire Off with a success quote to get that motivational ball rolling, which you've already done with your lobster comment that I'm still laughing about. <laughs> Take it away. All right, John, here we go. Having fun is not a diversion from a successful life. It is the pathway to it. And that is by Martha Beck. Love that quote for so many reasons. I love the fun theme that we're sticking with here. But take that quote, share with us how you apply that to your everyday life, to your mentality, Beth. Well, for me, John, I don't think fun and work have to be mutually exclusive. I am committed to bringing more fun into your life. And I'm committed to to giving you fun even at work. And I think that for most of us, we separate out our lives where fun is what we do when we're not at work. Right. And I think, right? And I think for those of us who have figured out, and it's a journey, and it doesn't happen overnight, and it certainly took me 20 years to figure it out. For those of us who figure out how to do work that's also fun, that is what leads us on that path to the successful life. And I'm not defining success necessarily by money and a big house. I mean, to me, success is getting up and feeling really passionate and excited about what your life is bringing you every day. That's great stuff. And we're going to diverge off the road of funness for just a second because our next topic is incredibly important for entrepreneurs to grasp, to understand, to realize that as part of being an entrepreneur, and that's failure. That's challenges and obstacles that we face every single day on certain levels. Beth, take us back to a time in your journey when you failed or when you faced a major challenge or obstacle that you had to dig deep to overcome. And how'd you overcome that? Well, I'm going to take it back, then that, and that comes before Pop Zazz, but it's what led me to Pop Zazz, if Perfect. that's okay. Just, okay. I was working for five years for Fox Networks, as I said earlier. And in that job, I was responsible as the director of business affairs for handling over 40 cable networks, such as Fox Movie Channel, FX, Fox Sports Networks, Fox Deportes, many, many networks like that. Um, we were responsible for negotiating the affiliation agreements with all the different cable companies like DirecTV and Dish and Cablevision, et cetera. And one of the things that hit me on a day-to-day basis was I ended up in this position because I was qualified, but I ended up in this position because I had a law degree and they needed a law degree and it wasn't something I was really passionate about. And I wanted to get into a more creative role. I wanted to get into programming, into scheduling, maybe acquisitions. I wanted to get out of the business side, and I wanted to get into the creative side. And one of the things I learned is that for all its blessings and, you know, financial success, oftentimes you get pigeonholed in corporate America. If you're the director of business affairs, you can't be the director of programming because you've never done it before. We don't see you in that road. You needed to start 20 years ago doing it. And it was a real obstacle for me, John, because I knew I could have been great at that job, but I couldn't get someone, even though I worked with these groups every single day, I couldn't get them to see, have them see me and the role I saw myself. And so it became a real obstacle. And I sat in a job that while I loved the people and I loved the company because I loved working for Fox, I didn't love my role in it. And after sitting in it for about two years, not feeling happy, it hit me 
that, you know what, you know, it's, what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing every single day and expecting a different result. Well, I've got to bring a different result and it's not going to come here. It means I have to create something different and then I'll be out of that insanity mode, so to speak. If I'm going to have to come up with something that allows me to use my creative abilities, you know, obviously with the business, because business, it can't all be creative. And, and I'm going to have to set a new path for myself. And, and that's what I did. And it was a real obstacle, John, for about two years. I can definitely see that being an obstacle with somebody with your creativity, your energy, and just passion for life, Beth. And I'm really just thankful that you shared to that level of detail with us, with Fire Nation. And i love to just pull out one clear lesson that you had from that experience. One clear lesson I had, John, from that experience is just because everyone tells you you should be happy doesn't mean you're going to be happy. If so that makes true. Sense. <laughs> it makes so much sense. I've heard it over and over again so many times in my life. And we had a little chat in our pre-talk, Beth, and we mentioned about law school and the fact that you obviously went to law school and became a lawyer and had your law degree. And myself, I did go to law school and I was just so unhappy in law school and I was definitely able to break away, but it was not easy because I came from a family of lawyers and I had that expectation on me and everybody's like, wow, John, you're on this perfect trajectory of success. You were an officer in the army. You went to war. You came back. Now you're going to be a lawyer and you're going to join your father's law firm. You must be so happy. And I wasn't. Just because other people say you're going to be happy or think you should be happy doesn't mean you're fulfilling your authentic self. And John, you hit it on the nose and you're so right with that. And I, I actually respect you so much because you had the guts that I didn't. You had the no, guts to say, I'm not going to do it. And I was too afraid to say, I'm not going to do it. Even though I knew the second day of law school, this isn't for me. <laughs> I shouldn't be here. But I told everyone I was in the program. I was committed. So I didn't have the courage to just leave. And when I see what you did, I really, really respect that. Thank you so much, Beth. I really respect what you were able to do at a later age. And I'm so glad you're sharing your journey. And part of that journey is going to take us to the other end of the spectrum. And that's the aha moment when that light bulb goes off and you say, wow, this is going to resonate with my authentic self. This is my target market. And You've already shared with us a couple aha moments you've had. I saw that light bulb go off and you're talking about pop Zaz. It's so obvious on so many levels. So Beth, share with us an aha moment that you would like to share with us when that light bulb did go off and how'd you turn that moment into success? As usual, John, you're right on time with everything. So last week I was posting something to, to my Facebook page and I needed another post and we all know that we can all get trapped sometimes in in social media. And my aha moment was this. I don't need to, I don't need my customers to think I know it all because sometimes obviously we we don't know it all. And to that point, I was thinking, what am I going to post for for my afternoon post? I want to get something up there. And I was testing board games with some of my testers and we, we test every game to make sure it's fun and that it fits our theme. And we were having a heck of a time coming up with what's going to match with this game we're testing. We were taste testing a game called Cooties. Um, It's a Milton Bradley game. It's a game you probably played as a kid. It sort of in with a game called Don't Break the Ice and Don't Spill the Beans there. But we kind of see it as a fun adult game that you can play with some friends and some cocktails. And (laughs) we were having a heck of a time, John, trying to figure out what, what the heck to put with the game. So literally, I took a picture of what we were testing. I put on Facebook, we're testing board games. What would you pair with this package? Thinking I would get nothing. John, it was my most popular post to date. I got so many of my Facebook community to to post and tell me what they think should go with the Cooties game. In a nutshell, I now have a new package we're going to come out with this summer based on the Facebook community's feedback. Wow. Can you share with us what you're pairing with cooties? Yes, of course I can. What came out, of course, is we are going to put gummy worms because the cooties (laughs) are like worms. And we're going to put a cupcake mix with a special icing that's going to match the cooties. So it's sort of what we call a sugar rush package with the cooties. And 
a bunch of people in the community all said the same thing. So if they're all saying it, I mean, your community can't be wrong. So that's was- your target market. I mean, that's your audience. That's the importance of reaching out with these minimally viable products, these MVPs that Eric Reese talks so eloquently about right. in his book, The Lean Startup, because until we get out there and talk to the people who are going to be our customers, we don't really know what they want. So that's incredible, powerful information. Thank you, John. It was it was incredible to me because to your point, I read Eric's book and it was the first time I saw in action exactly what he was talking about. Boom. He was a great guest on Entrepreneur on Fire. He's no Beth Millman, but he's pretty impressive. I'd say he's better than Beth Millman. <laughs> <laughs> so Beth, pull out just one clear lesson that you had from this experience. Tell Fire Nation. The clear lesson is Don't think you know it all. Your audience, your community, your fans, they know as much and they will lead you in the right direction. Oh, my audience has such great ideas sometimes. It's amazing. I love them all. I love your audience because I'm part of your audience. (laughs) You are Fire Nation, Beth. (laughs) I am Fire Nation and Fire Nation is me. (laughs) I love it. Beth, have you had an I've made it moment? You know, John, I have not had an I made it moment yet because we have only been up and launched since February. But I was thinking maybe in a year from now I could share an I made it moment and you could do what I call Fire Nation Reload and come back to those of us who are guests who are new in our businesses and we could share with you what our I made it moment is. But right now I think we're still on the path where we're trying to make it every single day. We're a new business, we're testing things, we're pivoting when necessary, we're responding to what our customers want. And you know, frankly, I, I sometimes wonder, will I ever have an I, mom- I made it moment? So right now, I don't think I can point to one I made it moment, other than, I guess if I really thought about it, then I get to be a guest on your show. Uh-huh. And I guess I could say I made it in that regard. Well, the value that you're providing is incredible. I just wrote down Fire Nation Reload. It's an amazing idea. I mean, think about it. Shark Tank, what are people's favorite part about Shark Tank when they go back to past guests, to past seasons, and they give an update about how that person is doing? People love that part of Shark Tank. And I'd love to hear your other guests and hear you know, what they've done in the past year and where they are, because I think I could learn as much on their journey because we bring you that kind of information a year later, a lot smarter, maybe a little bit kicked around, but a lot wiser, so to speak. (laughs) Well, Beth, you know that I love this question, the I've made a moment, because I always get different answers. Some entrepreneurs say, John, I'll never have one. Some say, John, I have one every single day. For me, personally, I love to talk about the journey, the milestones, the accomplishments, the achievements, and really enjoying those moments. So my question to you now, Beth, is are you enjoying the journey? John, I am loving the journey. I think that the journey is almost more fun than the destination, to tell you the truth. I really, it's challenging. Some days, as you know, can be defeating, but you get yourself back up the next day you stay focused. We, we all believe in the mission of our businesses and we have a bigger message to spread. And I think the key for, for all of us is to stay focused on that message. And for me, being part of a community and being able to learn from the entrepreneurs that you have every day, it keeps me going on this journey. I mean, I have to personally thank you, John. I listen to your show every single day as I was building this company because it inspired me and I learned something from each and every one of the entrepreneurs that, that you have and had on your show because, you know, sometimes we all think we're smart, but we don't need to reinvent the wheel if someone else has reinvented it. And then it's the other time you do need to reinvent the wheel. It's just sort of figuring out when I'm reinventing and when I'm going to sort of copy, so to speak. So powerful. Now, Beth, I want to set you loose here because you have so much to share, so much energy, so much enthusiasm. Let's talk to Fire Nation right now about Pop Zazz. Give us the rundown. Tell us what's exciting you right now. Well, what is exciting me, John, right now is the fact that we get to be super disruptive and super creative in an industry that maybe has been sort of the same for many years. 
what we're doing at Pop Zazz is we're taking a board game and we're finding really fun, creative items that encourage conversation, connection, and fun. And to that regard, what we're doing is we're creating packages around, say, for example, a product called Bananagrams. Bananagrams is a word game. It comes in a yellow banana cloth shaped like a banana, so it's a banana package, and it's full of tiles that you make word games. Most companies sell it alone. Here's Bananagrams. What we're doing at Pop Zazz, we're taking that Bananagram package and we're pairing it with a barrel of monkeys. Why? Because what is a monkey without a banana? So we put the game <laughs> barrel, right, John? You put the game barrel of monkey right with the Bananagrams, and then to top it off, we're including a tasty snack theme to the game called banana, B-A-R-N-A-N-A. -A -A. And so you got food and fun all in one package. And that's exciting to me because at this point, no one else is doing that in the industry. I am having the founder of Barnana on my show next month. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> he and I have become friends. <laughs> oh, so you were my link to him. I knew it was yes, familiar somehow. Yes. <laughs> He's fabulous. And his product is truly groundbreaking. It is revolutionizing the banana market, so to speak. And people who try it will love it. Well, I'm really excited. And Beth, I know that you have so much excitement about Pop Zazz, so share with us something else and your vision for the future. Well, our vision for the future is this, John. We sort of feel that we could take this in a myriad of places, and by that I mean we are also going to be coming out with some packages that I sort of referenced earlier that take games that we played as children, games like Don't Break the Ice, Cooties, Don't Spill the Beans, and we actually theme them with games that are with items that are absolutely perfect for adult cocktail parties, for adult nights out, for you know a get together with another couple. So, for example, we take a game that most of us played as kids, and I'm not sure if you played it, but it's a game called Don't Break the Ice. That does sound familiar. Okay, and we pair it with a fun ice tray in the shape of an abominable ice man. Each little ice cube comes as an abominable ice man. He's a little snowman. And then we throw in a cocktail shaker, John. So, <laughs> you know, now play responsibly. We're not advocating. This is for adults now. We're not saying- No kids. binge drinking allowed. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, we feel that we can reinvent the market by taking these games that people see in one way and, and bringing them out to a whole different market so that, you know, as adults- we can just rediscover the fun that we used to have as kids when play was number one for us. Powerful. Well, Beth, as you know, I'm moving out to your neck of the woods, SoCal, very shortly here. So I'm excited to have a night of fun-filled Pop Zazz games in our near future. Well, I am looking forward to bringing the fun down to you in San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff. We're going to take a minute now to thank our sponsors, GoToMeeting and Squarespace. Fire Nation, when your entire team can get together, it's amazing what gets accomplished. Projects that take weeks, decisions that take days are done right then and there. But gathering everyone together from different locations can be time-consuming, expensive, and often plain impossible. That's why we use GoToMeeting with HD Faces. It makes it easy for your entire team to get together online, whenever you need to, no matter where people are. With GoToMeeting by Citrix, you can share the same screen so you stay on the same page. And the built-in HD video conferencing makes your online meetings just like being in the same room. Plus, it's simple to launch or join a meeting from anywhere using your computer, smartphone, or tablet. Even present from your iPad. Fire Nation, try GoToMeeting free for 30 days. Don't wait. For this special offer, visit gotomeeting.com, click the Try It Free button, and use a promo code FIRE. Remember, promo code FIRE. Now let's chat Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it easy to create your own website that's designed just the way you want it. Now when I say all-in-one, I mean it. With Squarespace, you're getting a platform that includes features like hosting, SEO, and it even makes your site automatically look great on any device through responsive design. It's incredibly easy to use, and here's the best part. Squarespace's all-in-one platform starts at just $8 a month and includes a domain name if you sign up for a year. 
Squarespace is also constantly updating their platform with new features, designs, and increasing customer support to make sure you have all the tools you need to create the website you want. They have a bunch of beautifully designed templates for you to start with and tons of style options for you to adjust as you start building. Fire Nation, you can sign up for a free trial and get 10% off when you go to squarespace.com and use the offer code FIRE. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. So Beth, we've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning round, and this is where I ask you a series of questions, and you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Absolutely. (laughs) All right. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? For me, John, it was not fear. It was money. To do an e-commerce business, I know others would say you don't, but I really felt I needed to have a certain capital built up. I wanted to be able to ship when I needed to ship, and I didn't want to be sort of one of those who throw up a store and, and you know not have a lot of thinking and thought to the store. I really needed capital to be able to do this because I am not venture capital funded. I am self-funded like many of your entrepreneurs. And I needed to have a great deal of working capital in order to, to you know, get this venture off the ground. Um, I would have loved to have been an entrepreneur 10 years ago. I think for me, I had to get to this point when I could financially do it. Powerful. What's the best advice you've ever received? Best advice, John, that I received wasn't personal, but it was something that I read by someone who I would say has had an I made it moment. And um, her name, obviously a lot of people know, it was Bethany Frankel. And again, I haven't met her, but what she said when she was developing Skinny Girl Margarita is, don't assume that those in the know know everything. (laughs) Meaning when she was creating Skinny Girl, she got told that ah, there's no need for your product. The market isn't going to be interested. It's not going to do well. And, you know, flash forward a couple of years later, all the companies that told her there's no market were trying to buy her product. And it got bought by Beam Global for $120 million. And for me, I think a lot of people told me, oh, Beth, there's no market. Board games are dead. What are you doing? I think you're crazy to pair them with food. Who would want to do that? And we've had a fantastic response from the community and the people that we're serving have been super responsive to what we're doing. So I think my moment is, yes, people in the know, they know, but they don't know everything. Love that. And let me just share a little story with Entrepreneur on Fire. When I launched, my idea, Beth, was I was going to be the first show. I was going to fill that niche that I felt like existed out there of that daily podcast that interviewed inspiring and successful entrepreneurs. And at the time, almost every single show out there was either weekly or bi-weekly. And I just didn't think that was often enough, especially for someone like myself who was driving to work every day, who was going to the gym, always looking to consume passionate, on-demand content that podcast provides. And people were like, John, A, you can't provide that much content. B, people are going to want to consume that much content. It's so important to listen and to take constructive criticism and to have coaches and mentors. But at the same time, you have to trust your gut on so many levels, put blinders on and drive forward. And here we sit now with over 200,000 unique downloads in over 145 countries and growing every single day. Look at Skinny Girl Margarita. Look at Beth Millman with what she's about to be doing with Pop Zazz. Exciting stuff. Thank you, John. I mean, you are such a perfect example of listening to your intuition and, and you know, taking coaching, but just doing it because as, as a member of your community who listens every day, I would be very sad if I didn't get a new entrepreneur on fire every day. There <laughs> definitely is a need for what you're doing. You are so kind. And Beth, what is something that's working for you right now? I'm really working with a great team of, of people who are helping to build this brand. And I, if, if I'm allowed, John, to give a shout out to them. Absolutely. Thank you. I, I'd like to call out uh, Ron Hebshi of a company called Brandhesive and Jacqueline Mullen of a company called Jacqueline Mullen Media. Both of them are helping me daily build this brand and they both have varying expertises, but to have people that you work with that share your vision, 
and can help you hone that vision and maybe even expand that vision in a way you never thought possible is just a blessing that is so working for me right now. And I, you know, to, to that effect, Jacqueline, um, is the one who put me in touch with, with Kawe a banana, John who's yeah. going to the show. She, he, their, their company started following me on Twitter. I thought it came from Jacqueline. They actually started following me on their own. But when I mentioned, Oh, we have this new company following us. She's like, Oh, I know the founder Kawe. I'll, I'll put you in touch. And the rest is history. And that's how we came up with the banana package called smells like banana spirit. So, um, don't, I think for me, what's working is the power of an amazing team. Powerful stuff, Beth. Do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? Yes, I am using one called Pick Monkey, and that's P I C M O N K E Y. I think, John, I found it from listening to a podcast by Michael Steltzner and yeah. Social Media Examiner. I believe he's the one who first mentioned it, and that's how it came to my attention. It is amazing. It's an amazing photo editor program. It's super easy, super fun for people who don't have Photoshop. If you want, something great to use for your photos to put on Facebook and Twitter for your social media. I highly, highly recommend PicMonkey. It's, there's a free version. And then if you pay for the upgraded version, which I did, if I recall, John, I don't think I paid more than $33 for the year, but do not let the price make you think it's not worth it. It's a fabulous photo editing program and it's fun. I mean, it just has a fun vibe to it. And if you're going to edit pictures and try to have a fun brand, why not have fun using your photo editor too? Definitely. Great resource and Fire Nation. You can get links to this resource and everything else that we've mentioned in today's episode by going to entrepreneuronfire.com slash Beth Millman. So Beth, could you recommend one book for our listeners? Yes. A book I really enjoyed is a book called By Invitation Only, How We Built Guilt and Changed the Way Millions Shopped. It's by the founders of the Guilt Group. Al, and their names are Alexis Maybank and Alexander Wilkes Wilson. I really enjoyed this book, John, because obviously I'm in the e-commerce world and guilt revolutionized shopping by coming up with the concept of flash sales online. And it's a very, to me, personal book that they wrote because they take you through how they came up with the brand, how they chose their co-founders, the struggles they had with supply, how to create a team, how to scale it. For me, it was right on point, but I think you don't have to be in the e-commerce world to enjoy this book. I think you'll get a lot of value just out of reading the journey of these two women. Wow. Sounds like I had to get them on the show. That's quite an entrepreneurial journey. I think you would love them. Love that. Well, Fire Nation, you can get the audio version of this book for free by going to eofirebook.com. It's a gift from Audible for Entrepreneur on Fire listeners, eofirebook.com. So Beth, this next question is my favorite. It's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? Well, since my food and shelter is taken care of, John, I would take that $500 and I would go out and I would buy as many board games as possible. Nice. Then I would take that, maybe I'd have to buy also some kind of dolly to roll in the board games. <laughs> then I would go to a cafe or a coffee shop with the games and I would introduce myself and start engaging and connecting with people and see who I could get to play these games with me. Who are you? What do you like to do? What do you think is fun? What are you looking for in your life? What are you missing? And I think from that, I, I would learn a lot because I think you can tell a lot by how people play games. Are they laid back? Are they competitive? What are they looking for? What are they missing in their life? And I think it would give me a lot of info to start my next venture. Beth, that was some actionable advice. I can see so clearly you at a coffee shop, at an outdoor table, the sun's shining, birds are singing, the sky is blue, and you're just playing board games and people are just 
having prolonged lunches and skipping the afternoon of work because they're having so much fun with you. <laughs> I love that vision, John. Skipping work, I love it. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for this incredible advice. Fire Nation as a whole, we are all better for it. Give us one parting piece of guidance, share how we can find you, and then we'll say goodbye. I think my parting piece of guidance is this. Go for it, people. If you're thinking it and you have a plan and you want to try it, go for it. Don't let another minute go by that you're sitting there wishing, hoping, dreaming. Just go for it. And for people who want to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me through our website, which is popsaz.com, P-O-P-Z-A-Z-Z.com. You can also get a hold of me through email, just Beth at popsaz.com. And John, I wanted to offer the Fire Nation listeners a little coupon code, if I may. Ooh, yes. We love coupon codes. So for Fire Nation, I appreciate you listening to my journey and listening to me speak with John. And I wanted to offer you a special coupon code by the name of Ignite. (gasps) I-G-N-I-T-E. And for those listeners, they are familiar with the term Ignite. By putting in this coupon code, it will give you a 15% off coupon for any of our items on popsaz.com and hopefully bring some fun and connection to your life. Wow. Well, Beth, we are going to link everything up in the show notes, including this coupon code. I can't wait for Fire Nation to take advantage. And Fire Nation, I want to hear about these fun games and the stories that the games are producing anytime. Shoot me an email, johnentrepreneuronfire.com. Beth, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, your experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you, John. Fire Nation. My first book, Podcast Launch, is now live at Amazon. In this book, I share all and have created a step-by-step process for launching your podcast. The Fire Bonus is 15 video tutorials that I included with the purchase. You join me as I walk us step-by-step through each process visually, and by the end, you will be a podcasting pro. Pick up your copy at podcastlaunch.com. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.